the Sustainable Uplands project is for anyone that lives, works, manages or just has an interest in upland environments. When we talk about UK uplands, we are talking about the hills, valleys, moors and mountains that form a really distinctive part of our countryside. These are areas of blanket bog, heather moor and rough grass and they are home to many plants and animals that aren't found anywhere else. Uplands include wild places such as the Scottish Highlands, the West Country Moorland, the Yorkshire Dales and the Peak District. However, these are landscapes under a wide range of pressures. For example, there's a very low number of young people coming into hill farming. And along with that, we've got changes in agricultural payments and upland policy that can lead to uncertainty. With the additional pressures of climate change, the people who live in and use these environments are increasingly concerned about what the future may hold for them. My name is Mark Reeves, I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Aberdeen and I've been helping to coordinate the Sustainable Uplands project over the last five years. The Sustainable Uplands project is all about working with a diverse range of different people to try and anticipate what the future might hold for our hills uh, and then to think with people about how we might be able to effectively respond to the kind of changes that we see in future. These may be opportunities that we want to grasp uh, they may also be things which we, we perhaps fear uh, and do not want to happen. And thinking with people about how we can either prevent things from happening that we don't want uh, or adapt so that we can maintain people's livelihoods uh, and the environment upon which they depend uh, in Britain's hills. The Sustainable Uplands project was designed to help people think for alternative futures and help them prepare and adapt to change. The aim was about trying to identify future problems to look at the way that uplands might be managed in the future and how people can come together to find solutions to that problem. So there were really three main steps to the project. Firstly, it was about identifying the current needs and aspirations of the people who live, work and manage these environments, exploring the challenges and opportunities that they face. Secondly, it was about using this information to anticipate future change in the uplands and how this will affect the people involved. And finally, the project aimed to bring people together to find ways we can cope with this future change. Research questions originally came about for this project by going out and asking people on the ground in the uplands of the UK what they thought mattered to them. We had a wide range of stakeholders involved. We had companies, we had water companies, for example. We had different conservation agencies from the local, regional and national level. We had people who live in the area. We had uh, people representing visitors and ramblers and so on. The project really worked on increasing the understanding between different stakeholders and researchers. And this was done through a number of upland site visits, interviews and workshops. So I spent a lot of my time interviewing farmers, speaking to landowners, going out into the field, up into the uplands with gamekeepers and people who work in the uplands to try and understand their current situation, what they do currently in terms of management and how that might change in the future. Working so closely helps to learn from each other, helps to widen the knowledge base. Because it's impossible to gather data from the future, the Sustainable Uplands project developed computer models to get a feel for what may happen in the uplands in the future. Models were developed that could combine information on current environmental conditions, land management practices, as well as how people make decisions. You can actually use the models to, to combine a range of land management options, of climate scenarios, to have a view our best view of the future. The modelling has been going on throughout the duration of the project, pulling uh, from information from the fieldwork at the beginning. There has been at least four or five modellers working at various stages throughout the project. The computer models are similar to calculators, so the research team can feed in current information based on their fieldwork and the input from stakeholders. The models are then able to put all this information together and recognise the current patterns and trends of a certain situation. 
The model can then, as a result of this, provide information about how certain factors may influence these environments in the future. I think what's unique about the Sustainable Uplands project is the way that it brings people together across a range of disciplines uh, and brings academia together with practitioners, the people who are actually doing things in the uplands to try and solve some of the major issues that we face. The Sustainable Uplands project considered how our uplands might change under future social, economic and environmental conditions. As a result of this, the project has identified a range of innovative and practical solutions to help people cope with and harness these changes, as well as identifying ways policymakers can support adaptation in Britain's hills. No single group of scientists or no single person could have done such a complex project, so it needed really the integration of these different types of knowledges, different types of approaches. It really needed sociologists and natural scientists like hydrologists and soil scientists work, to work closely together. And also it needed the inputs of, from the stakeholders to find out what, what is of relevance to them, what are important aspects of the system and how do they see uh, the problems of the future, what's relevant to them. Now we can continue to work closely with local people and policy communities to turn this research into practice, leading to practical applications on the ground. The ideal outcome, so to say, would be to keep the process going. People make use of uh, the results that were built, the, the process in a way lives on, the project lives on even though the funding has stopped and, and the project itself is long gone.